there rubber dub subs, it's Black Metal Werewolf making a brand new video for you this week. And today I'm going to be starting a new series on my channel called In Depth. In these videos I'm going to be doing a deep dive into my favorite albums or my favorite bands that I have a close personal connection to for one reason or another. In these videos I'll be talking about the music, the art, and just generally why I love them so much. So without further ado, let's jump into my first In Depth video. So, for my first in-depth video, I really wanted to go with an album that, that got me into heavy metal. And I specifically remember getting this album because, for me at the time, it wasn't just music. It was an experience. I specifically remember it was after my 13th birthday. It was a Friday night. I had a little bit of money in my pocket for my birthday. And as I was walking home, I knew I was going to have a place to myself. I knew both my parents were out of town and both my older brothers were at work almost the entire night. So I had the place to myself and I couldn't be happier about it. But this money was burning a hole in my pocket and I really wanted to spend it. And uh, as I was walking home, there was a small store in town called Movie Mat. And I'm almost positive that place no longer exists, which is a crying shame. And like I've said before, I lived in a very small farming town in Canada. So as you can imagine, there were not a lot of metal albums around. But they, this store did have a very small metal section that you could look at. So when I, uh, after school, I walked to this place on my way home and I was just going through the music in the metal section and this album caught my eye. It scared me, it intrigued me, and all I wanted to do was buy it, go home and listen. So that's what I did. I bought it and I rushed home, but I didn't listen to it right away. I waited for the sun to go down, I closed all the blinds, turned off all the lights, turned the computer on, popped the disc in, completely pitch black except for the light of the monitor, and I just sat down and listened to this music, flipping through the lyric book, listening to every song. And let me tell you, it was life-changing for me. So that's why I think this album deserves my attention, and that album is Rob Zombie's Hellbilly Deluxe. So let's start off by talking about the music, shall we? And let me tell you, when I first picked this album up and I read the track listing, it weirded me out because it's something I'd never really seen before. We have song names like Call of the Zombie, Perversion 99, How to Make a Monster, uh, What Lurks on Channel X. I had never really listened to a lot of music like this before, so titles like that really intrigued me, scared me, but really just drew me in and wanted me to listen to it. So of course, the album starts out with Call of the Zombie, which is a very creepy nursery rhyme narrated by a little girl. I remember when I first listened to this, it scared me fucking stupid. Just this creepy little girl's voice, ugh, just sends shivers up my spine. And it still does to this day every single time I listen to it. So after that, we get into the three most popular songs of the album. Super Beast, Dragula, and Living Dead Girl. Of course, if you've ever been to a Halloween party, chances are you've heard one of these songs. And these songs, I, I, I really do feel that these three songs do overshadow the entire album because those are the three singles, therefore those ones that everyone has listened to and they really haven't paid much attention to the rest of the album. Really, like I said, if you've ever been to a Halloween party, uh, played a video game or seen a movie, chances are you've heard at least one of these songs, especially Dragula, that seems to be the most popular. And by no means am I trying to say that those songs aren't good because they really are damn good songs. But the thing is, I just think it overshadows the rest of the album. But putting those three singles aside, this album is still very solid. It has a lot of really good rocking songs like Demonoid Phenomenon and Meet the Creeper. And also has a lot of really creepy atmospheric ones like Return of the Phantom Stranger and How to Make a Monster. The great thing I love about this is it clearly wants to set an atmosphere and a tone and it sticks through it with the entire album. Not a lot of artists can do that. So I really applaud Rob Zombie for what he did with the music on this album. Now, of course, I can't talk about an album without talking about the album art, and this one does not disappoint. Just right at the very beginning, you have this incredibly creepy painting of Rob Zombie with a blood red X on his forehead, his glowing yellow eyes, green moldy hair and beard, and pale blue skin. He looks like a creepy, decaying zombie. Clearly something he was going for, and it damn well works. And then, once you go to the back of the album, you have a clip from the Dracula music video where it has Rob Zombie dancing with a robot. I remember when I watched the music video and I saw this, I always wanted to know what that robot was. And it turns out it's a robot from the movie called The Phantom Creeps. 
It took me years to find that out, but I'm glad I finally did. So now I can finally tell people, that's the, the robot from the Phantom Creeps. Useless information, but it's always cool to know. But the front and back cover are really just scratching the surface of all the scary, weird art this album has to offer. The second you open it up, you get hit with even more of it. The back of the lyric book has this incredibly well done painting of Rob Zombie in front of a haunted house with a mummy, ghosts, a hunchback, and a werewolf. Holy crap, is it getting good. And just the album art on the disc itself is cool. It has even more ghouls, mummies, werewolves, monsters. It's just so badass and creepy. And then as soon as you take the disc out, it has an even cooler picture of another werewolf. How can you go wrong with all this cool creepy art? And of course, the album art only gets more intense the more you go through the lyric book. The lyric book was obviously inspired by old 50s horror comics like Tales from the Crypt and The Haunt of Fear. And it does a very good job for it. One of the highlights of this lyric book is how some of the lyrics are presented. For example, songs like Super Beast and Dragula, it's clearly a comic strip and the lyrics are the word bubbles. Something I had never seen before and something I haven't seen since. So it's very creative and a good way to present it because honestly not a lot of bands do it. Some album arts, like uh, lyric books I've gone through, is nothing just pitch black with white lettering and that's it. Whereas this one clearly goes above and beyond to present this in a very artistic and creepy way, which I very much enjoy. And of course, continuing with more of the horror comic theme, this album even has fake ads inside of it, which I thought were really interesting. It's probably one of my favorite parts. My personal favorite ad in here is the new monster masks. The mummy, the zombie, the monster, the witch. These look so cool and I wish I could have them. At the time, I actually thought these ads were real, but of course, as an adult, as an adult now, I realized they were indeed fake and was just part of the aesthetic for the album. Still looks cool, but I just wish I, these could be real ads so I could order these myself. Maybe I'll try looking up on eBay now. And outside of that, of course, you just have the standard fare of cool pictures of the bands, half-naked pictures of Rob Zombie's wife, really cool artwork that I tried to duplicate I don't even know how many times back in my high school years when I tried to draw my old sketchbooks. Overall, this album art is creepy, it's cool, it's scary, and I absolutely love it. Honestly, I can put this album on any day of the week and go through this and be thoroughly entertained. So in conclusion, this has to be one of my most favorite albums of all time. And it's a lot of people's too. Hell, even Ozzy Osbourne. I read an article where he talked about his uh, 10 favorite metal albums, and this was one of them. So this album clearly has had an impact on a lot of people, and for damn good reason. I can pop this motherfucker in and listen to it in its entirety any day of the week. Honestly, I had this entire album on repeat the entire month of October because it is the perfect Halloween soundtrack. It captures a creepy, horrific, uh, supernatural Halloween theme, and that's why I love it so much. But now, I'd kind of like to get your guys' opinion on this. What do you think of Rob Zombie's Hellbilly Deluxe? Do you think it's a good album? Do you not like it? Uh, do you have fond memories the way I do when you were younger? Please leave me a comment letting me know what you think of Rob Zombie's Hellbilly Deluxe. So that's it for today's video. If you like what you saw, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave me a comment letting me know what you thought of today's video. Check out some of my past videos and share with a few of your friends while you're at it. If you want to keep up with me on a more daily basis, you can follow me on Facebook and on Instagram. I also have a P.O. box open. All that info is down in the description. I have a handful of the Halloween patches left, so if you'd like to get your very own, just click right over here. There's also a link in the description. Overall, I just want to say thank you very much for watching, and don't forget, guys, to stay brutal.